So, however, write realist explanations. Mm, however, sorry, folks. However, Texas has capital punishment. So harsh punishment. It has capital punishment. So, so harsh punishment. However, it doesn't. It has the highest crime rate of all the US states. So Texas has capital punishment and it has the highest crime rate of all the US states, suggesting this right realist explanation is not rooted in fact, this is from your policy grid, and Naga notes that the certainty of getting caught with CCTV is more effective than harsh punishment, suggesting capital punishment doesn't work as a deterrent. Suggests really capital punishment doesn't work as a deterrent. And it's a little bit ironic that realists kind of want everything built in stats and it doesn't seem to stand up. So paragraph four, write realist explanations of crime. All right, realist explanations of deviance. Let's do both parts of the question. Right, realist explanations of deviance. Consider the community. Right, realist explanations of deviance. Ultimately, consider the community's role. So for Wilson and Kelling, the community is a key factor in controlling crime. The community is a key factor in controlling crime. So we need active citizens. Community is a key factor in controlling crime. We need active citizens to challenge antisocial behaviour. And to impose informal sanctions. And to impose informal, informal social control. To prevent a spiral into more serious crime. Challenge antisocial behaviour and impose informal social control to prevent a spiral into more serious crime. For Wilson, he advocates zero tolerance. where minor incivities need to be taken seriously. They advocate zero tolerance where minor incivities need to be taken seriously and punished by police. This again will prevent a spiral of decline. When introduced, there's a decline. I'm going to leave it there. This shows. Right, realist explanations of crime. Consider 
the informal social control. What they're considering is that informal social control can prevent deviant acts and crime. They consider that if we look at informal social control, we can prevent deviant acts and crime from developing. When zero tolerance was introduced in New York, evidence showed crime rates halved, suggesting informal or suggesting social control is an effective explanation and policy to introduce. It does suggest that social control is quite an effective explanation for crime and a really good social policy to introduce and that zero tolerance, I suppose, is a really good social policy to introduce. However, however, when zero tolerance was introduced in New York, sorry, in uh, King's Cross. The evidence shows that crime moved to the neighboring areas. The evidence showed that crime moved to neighboring areas. Suggesting that these explanations for the cause of crime and the solutions don't work in practice. That their explanations, that if we can just have informal social control, none of us will commit crime, doesn't really stand up in practice. So, to conclude then, how useful is right realism? How useful are their explanations to explain crime and deviance? I'd argue they're lacking. So, to conclude, right realist explanations of crime focus on humanity in general being selfish and greedy. To conclude, right readers' explanations of crime focus on humanity in general being greedy and selfish. That crime is naturally occurring. They really only tell us that crime is just the result, that we're all greedy and selfish, really that crime is naturally occurring. And therefore, focus, and they therefore focus their energy or their explanations on offering solutions to reduce crime. So they really their explanation is everyone's greeny and selfish. Crime is therefore naturally occurring. And therefore, their focus, they focus their explanations on offering solutions to reduce crime. These often, when reviewed in detail with statistical comparisons, don't actually reduce crime. So when reviewed in detail with statistical comparisons, they don't actually reduce crime. They merely move it and serve to demonize 
very vulnerable groups. They serve to demonize very vulnerable groups who actually are more likely to be victims of crime. And actually, they really only serve to move crime and demonize very vulnerable groups who actually are more likely to be victims of crime. Both their explanations and solutions lack detail and both their explanations and solutions lack detail and any practical um, both their explanations and solutions lack detail and any so both their explanations and solutions lack both their, their explanations and contributions don't add to our understanding of either crime or deviance. That is my sociological opinion because most of the time I've spent in this essay I've actually been talking about their solutions to crime and that's because their explanations are lacking. The only explanations we really get is from Murray, kind of, we've created an underclass. And the other one is that we're naturally greedy and selfish. The others don't even bother with an explanation. They go straight into solutions because they want to focus all their attention on policy. So any questions, um, let me know, folks. <laughs>